For possible writers, especially of fiction, it might seem a challenge to know what kind of a story to put down on paper or social media. It has always been a dream of many to write something that people would want to read. Knowing how hard it is to put something down is a little scary. There are famous writers who seem to publish once a year or more, while others produce works made for the public every decade or less. There are even some who write one book and that is all they're known to have released. What is the secret formula for coming up with amazing stories to tell? Surprisingly, there are no formulas. It isn't luck either. All writers have it in them to develop the talent for recognizing moments that inspire the muse they are so desperate to find. Here is how successful writers handle those times when it seems they are hitting the writer's block wall. Hello and welcome to NBM English. My name is Nate and these are my notes. Probably every successful writer gets the question from someone. The more creative the writer, the more insistent the question. Where does the idea or ideas for a story originate? For those not familiar with creativity, it might be a complicated question. On the other hand, there are many creative people who also want to know the answer from those who have a lot more experience. It is a mystery for the uninitiated or less skillful who can't get beyond the blank page of the mind, ever searching for that great shift in thought. Even those who are more experienced can sometimes wonder where they want to go next, either for a new project or to help move forward one that is already in the works. For those not used to creative life, it is one day after another of the same boring experiences. More than likely, they wake up in the morning, shower and dress, eat breakfast, and then go off to work. It doesn't matter where they work or even if they work at all. Each day is the same as the rest. With a life like that, there's no wonder that they can't come up with a new perspective. And that is what creative spirits have that others don't. The ability to look around them and find a world of everyday wonder. It doesn't have to be anything spectacular that must be put down right at that very moment in all its glory. Take a piece of scratch paper and put down a simple reminder or observation. Realize that story ideas can be found anywhere and in everyday circumstances. A fictionalized biographical movie of J.K. Rowling's from 2011 called Magic Beyond Words tried to portray the creative inspiration for her first Harry Potter books. It tells the story of how this single mother who eventually wrote and published one of the current century's most popular young readers book series became famous. Despite an otherwise interesting movie, the situations that sparked her imagination felt false. The movie's representation of the creative process didn't come off as believable because they happened without inner context. Of course, a movie that is based on telling a story through pictures is not the best for portraying the thoughts of characters. Perhaps that is why it is often said that books are better than movies. Whatever the reasons, too many portrayals of the inspirations of others are oversimplified coincidences. An object or person seen for the first time doesn't suddenly become a large part of the story, although they can have an impact. There's history behind the creative ideas. The truth is, most creative ideas boil together and ferment over time, coalescing into a single narrative structure after lots of thought. Before that can happen, the writer must pay attention to their surroundings or look back on long lost memories. Consider, according to Alice Leplante in the book from 2007, the making of a story, quote, Creative work comes from noticing. You are being given a warning, an intimation of something, and that something is a creative urge, sometimes buried deep in your subconscious. Material to uncover there, memories and associations to explore, close quote. This can take conscious work. For instance, the movie scene where J.K. Rowling sits in a cafe with a writing pad presents too casual an instance of inspiration. She watches two people playing a chess match and then carefully writes a scene that would become famous later. In real life, she would feverishly be jotting down a spur-of-the-moment idea. She would not want to forget what came to mind, and it certainly would not be seamlessly flowing from the previous text that she had written down before. No, there would have been a few jotted notes, a couple test sentences, 
perhaps in the best of situations, a quick flash of character dialogue to be fleshed out later. It would have been a stream of thoughts put down in the hopes that what just presented itself will make sense later in the story, or put aside for another project. The possible situation within J.K. Rowling's mind at the time, if there is any truth to be found in the scene, is much more complicated. More believably, she probably remembered playing or watching others play chess over several years. Seeing two people playing the game while concentrating on the next story idea brought back memories that inspired her to incorporate into the book. There's also, for those who know the book scene, a hint of Alice through the looking glass that might have inspired her while devising the living chess game. Considering that that book and its author Lewis Carroll are equally famous for children's English literature, it can't be a coincidence. She must have had that in mind when writing her own version of the game. The importance of watching one chess game rather than a lifetime of reading and experiences are exaggerated for storytelling. Yet, it distorts the true genius of the real storyteller. The recorded history goes that J.K. Rowling was sitting in a commuter train gazing out of the window. She came up with the idea of Harry Potter while delayed for four hours returning to London from a trip. Apparently, there are those who doubt the book idea came to her while on a train, although no other credible alternative is put forward. Her explanation of when and how the book idea came to her is realistic. To be sure, it didn't come all at the moment in full bloom. The Colonel probably existed floating around since childhood. Stephen King, another best-selling author, wrote in his excellent 2001 book, On Writing, quote, Good story ideas seem to come literally from nowhere, sailing at you right out of the empty sky. Two previously unrelated ideas come together and make something new under the sun. Your job isn't to find those ideas, but to recognize them when they show up. Close quote. Whatever set the spark to build the fire on the accumulated debris, there's no reason to disbelieve a train ride set the creative blood flowing and brought the book series to life. How often have even those who have never done any creative work daydreamed while bored or waiting? They daydream about fabulous vacations, starting hot romances with a crush or celebrity, or becoming a hero by doing an incredible deed of bravery. It is often during moments of reflection and boredom that daydreams can become projects given the right circumstances. Never ignore random thoughts unrelated to the reality of the moment. There is a common saying told to budding writers to write what you know, as if it was a truism that could bring success. Whoever says this is either lazy in answering the concerns of new writers or deliberately wanting to avoid a deeper discussion. To become a good writer, a person should write about what they don't know. This might sound counterintuitive, because if a writer doesn't know the topic, then how can the information be accurate? Better advice would be, write what you are interested in, and study if the topic is unfamiliar. The idea of fiction, for instance, is writing about not only something that we don't actually know, but that is not real. For instance, how can science fiction and fantasy writers write about space travel and magic if the former aren't astronauts and the latter are dealing with more than pulling rabbits out of a hat. Certainly the best science fiction writers have studied the latest scientific research, but that doesn't mean a planet by the name of Regula has aliens living on the surface. For that matter, cowboy westerns deal with the people and events that happened more than a century ago, although they are working with more history and reality than the others might. Those with non-fiction ideas should be more seriously considering the write what you know advice, but only partly. They too would be kept back from creative possibilities by not stretching past their own lives and knowledge. Research is the busy and time-consuming companion for any creative process. To write is self-discovery for charting the unknown made knowable. The best words for generating story ideas is, what if, and then seeking to answer that question. This can be done by the study of knowledgeable sources or imagining the end product of theories or consequences. How does the imagination or inspiration for story ideas work in the real world? 
It begins with a long thought process that takes into account the life experience that everyone has. Unless a person is born and raised in a cave, there is a lifetime of joy, sadness, love, and conversation with many people. Very few do not have passion for something. Readers love books, athletes love games, mathematicians love equations. Where that list ends cannot be known. All it takes is putting unrelated things together to form a new combination. As a story prompt, there is a computer gamer next door who is tall and loves to play basketball. What happens when a high profile computer game competition and his college basketball game are to be played on the same night? Comment down below if they should go to the basketball game or the computer game. What happens next? Chances are that few think a person can be a video game enthusiast or a basketball player of high quality at the same time. The great thing about imagination is there can be. The interesting thing about reality is there might be. Unrelated or opposing ideas coming together can make wonderful stories. Conflict is the basis of story structure. There are times when a concept doesn't work out and it has to be abandoned. But when it does come together, the results can be exciting and satisfying. Getting at the heart of where story ideas come from, there is no magic formula. They can come from other books a writer enjoys, a dream that cannot be left alone, such as the highly successful, although controversial, Twilight series by Stephanie Meyer, a conversation, a person's biography, an historical episode, an experience to remember or reinterpret, a challenge accepted, new knowledge expanding old, and there's nowhere to stop. For those who really want to know, a better question to ask an author, and one more likely to be answered by them, is where did that idea or that scene come from? Bringing up specifics means those with the question have actually taken time with the creator's work. The author will be more likely to be happy to answer those more specific questions. Chances are there's going to be an illuminating description of the backstory to that text. Still, don't be upset if the author responds a few times with, I don't know. They probably don't. Sometimes the subconscious is a powerful tool in generating story ideas. All an artist can do is go with that creative flow. For those who are trying to come up with a story idea, it is best to ask themselves for what reason they want to write. Examine the details of past and present with the goal of knowing thyself. Work with whatever comes from the answer, because that is probably the future story idea. Thank you for staying with me. Be sure to click the like button and subscribe below for more literary adventures.